Tonight on Q2, shots fired, landing several in custody. It scared me. You know, it's not something that you want to wake up to, that's for sure. But this recent violence is a reminder of the heartbreaking consequences after an innocent toddler is dead, along with a 31-year-old man. Just hours before that deadly shooting, more gunfire in a seemingly quiet neighborhood. I can tell you this morning I woke up and I heard a bang and I freaked. Like, I'm super jumpy. Bullets flying over the crib of a sleeping child, leaving shell casings littering the floor in an uninvolved house. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday night. I'm Andrea Lutz. Tonight, more questions than answers after another tragic shooting takes the life of a one-year-old boy and a 31-year-old man. It is the latest gun violence to plague billing, sending shock waves across our community. Well, the shooting happened at 10 o'clock this morning in the 700 block of North 17th Street. Police found the man dead, rushed the toddler to the hospital where he passed. Then just an hour or so later on the south side, police converged on the house in the 300 block of South 28th Street. This is where the SWAT team was activated. 10 people were detained, including the main suspect in the homicide. No charges are yet filed. Our Jackie Coffin was on scene throughout the day and has more details on the case. And finding suspects in this homicide case led to this. A standoff outside of a home on 28th Street as police and SWAT teams worked together to arrest suspects from inside of the house. Hours into a standoff, police pull at least 10 people from a house on the 300 block of South 28th Street. It's a house they're called to a lot. It's a residence where we frequent. It's kind of a flop house. People come and go all the time. Among those arrested are two main suspects in a homicide case one mile away. At about 10 a.m., I was awoken what sounded to be gunshots, about four gunshots. It was a very loud bang, so it startled me awake. Jessica Dorsett lives next door to the home where a 31-year-old man was found dead from a gunshot wound and a baby injured and taken to the hospital. Billings police say the one-year-old boy later died. She says there have been problems and a police presence here before. There has been some issues with those neighbors, a lot of disturbances, and uh, Last week, I actually was able to record audio of someone screaming and threatening to kill somebody. Wow, I wonder if I should call the cops. Dorset says police were quick to arrive Wednesday morning. Officers remained on scene throughout the day, and several bullet casings could be seen on the street as the suspect shot into the house, hit the man, and drove away. Police found the suspect vehicle here. An hours-long standoff with hostage negotiators, the SWAT team, and ultimately arrests. On the heels of another fatal shooting early Saturday morning, Lieutenant Matt Lennox says the department's resources... We're good. We have the manpower that we need to handle both scenes. Um, I know we've called our afternoon shift in to take calls for service, so this won't affect regular calls for service that are coming through our dispatch center. Obviously, we're going to be doing everything we can to resolve it as quickly as possible. As another shooting leaves residents shaken. Um, it's it's scary, honestly, you know, especially when it happens this close to you. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. And just hours before that shooting, there was another one. The scene unfolded in a rather quiet neighborhood with bullets hitting cars and flying through homes. One of those coming dangerously close to hitting a two-year-old girl who was sleeping that night in her crib. Charlie Kleps has the story. I'm here on Colton Boulevard between 16th Street and 15th Street, just a few blocks away from where Friday night shooting led to the death of Chandler Stalkup. Now here on Tuesday night, multiple rounds were fired off into the area. And while nobody was harmed, many are scared. Eleven seconds. That's how long the shots rang out. I don't even feel safe in my house anymore. A neighborhood that felt and sounded more like a battlefield Tuesday night, leaving residents rattled. I don't know what to say. It just, it's very nerve-wracking. It doesn't even matter where you live anymore. It happens everywhere. While a motive behind the drive-by shooting remains unclear, residents believe it's related to recent gang activity, but BPD says it's not. A few of those bullets ended up here, inside the bedroom of a two-year-old, narrowly missing the toddler's crib. 
That homeowner showed us the aftermath, but declined an interview, fearing for his family's safety. But his neighbors share his concern. Oh, I was scared to death. Like, that doesn't really happen in this neighborhood, and you hear about things happening like that, but you never think it would happen to you. When they're shooting into a house close to where I live, it's very scary. You know, I am retired, and my wife's retired, and we've loved the area because it's so quiet and there's never been any violence. Residents believe a house down the street was the target of the shooting, a home where a large party was taking place. Once the gunfire finally ceased, they say those four return shots were fired towards the vehicle, hitting the home instead. Oh, I was terrified. I didn't know. I was ducking in my high heels, running in the house. Somebody could have been killed. It just happened a couple days ago close to us. So to have it happen again now, it's very scary. A shocking reality, leaving many on edge with one shooting after another in Billings in recent days. I just, I don't know what to do anymore. I don't think anybody's safe. In Billings, Charlie Kleps for MTN News. The gunfire on Colton is just blocks away where gunshots took the life of an 18-year-old Rocky Mountain College student. Billings police say they don't believe the murder of Chandler Stallcup is connected to Colton Boulevard. The two suspects arrested arrested in Stallcup's death will appear in court on Friday and likely be charged as adults. A 16-year-old is charged with deliberate homicide and a 17-year-old charged with homicide by accountability. Police believe both are connected to local gangs. Billings Police Chief Rich St. John will be holding a news conference tomorrow at 3, not only to discuss these cases, but a rise in violent crime across Billings. And we will be taking that press conference live tomorrow at 3, right here on KTVQ. A Wolf Point man will spend 11 years in prison for a violent armed carjacking crime spree that spanned from Billings to Cascade County. 27-year-old Santana Cruz Ledoux pled guilty in May to attempted carjacking and brandishing a firearm. It all began on September 30th last year when Ledoux accosted a woman in Billings as she tried to get out of her car in a hospital parking lot. He pointed a gun at her, sprayed her with pepper spray, and fled in her vehicle. Weeks later, after he was spotted in Great Falls in a stolen truck, police chased him. Shots were fired then, and two more cars were stolen before he crashed near Sims. Agents recovered ammunition and ammunition boxes from the truck. Let's take a look back at the month of October as we recorded things here at the Billings Airport. We started off a little cool and then warmed up, then a little cool and then got very warm. In fact, we hit 81 degrees two days in a row for our warmest reading before we hit all the cold and the snow. Ended up 6.7 inches of snow. This above the average. And we also ended up with over two inches of total precipitation, which was about three quarters of an inch more than we would typically see. But when you balance all of these warm and cold spaces, out, we actually came up pretty close to average. We were uh, just shy of one degree below the seasonal average or the, the monthly average based on the last 30 years. Will we stay with this pattern of up and down? We'll talk about the forecast coming up. Montana's wildfire season could be a year round concern now. However, Governor Greg Gianforte says firefighters kept Montana safe with hard work this summer. The Montana DNRC kept 96% of wildfires this season to 10 acres or less. As of October 30th, just over 1,600 wildfires have burned nearly 117,000 acres. It's also cost $41 million. 79% of the wildfires were caused by people. The governor's office says faster initial attack and new laws helped limit fires before they spread. Mining regulations in Montana could change. Montana lawmakers approved two new laws this year, one surrounding water quality reclamation and the other, environmentalists argue, could financially burden groups from suing mining companies unless they can pay to lose. But all of it still would need the green light from the Department of Interior. New tonight, our David J has what folks are saying about the proposed changes. Ranchers and environmentalists offered their comments at the meeting. One of the bill's sponsors spoke in favor of the proposed changes, and the new laws have some concern in Musselshell County. Landowners near the Bull Mountain Mine near Roundup say coal mining reclamation has not been completed. My brother 
Steve has had the most damage. They, he's got subsidence cracks uh, all over his place. Kit Charter Nielsen's brother has been challenged with injuries to his cattle. Earth Justice and the Western Environmental Law Center sent a letter with legal analysis to the Department of Interior's Office of Surface Mining Reclamation and Enforcement complaining about the cracks and asking to have officials follow the law. We have not yet heard back from Signal Peak Mining about the remediation or the proposed laws. I truly believe mining and agriculture can coexist, but it has to be done right. More than 20 testified at a hearing on Wednesday afternoon. The House bill would define material damage to the hydraulic balance as significant long-term or permanent adverse change. As long as it is similar to the water quality around it or to the pre-existing conditions around it, that is not adversely damaged. Water. Speaker Pro Tem Rhonda Knudsen says material damage was previously not clearly defined. It makes it almost impossible for a landowner to be sure that their water will maintain its current quality. The other bill authorizes a court or agency to award reasonable attorney costs to the party that wins the case. The prospect of having to pay their bill uh, if you don't prevail it would obviously have a pretty strong chilling effect. Senator Steve Fitzpatrick is a sponsor of that bill. The concern is that, that you get these long litigation processes and that even if you eventually do prevail after many years, you may not you may not even be able to do it. Public comment ends on November 6th, and the Office of Surface Mining Reclamation and Enforcement expects a decision to take two to three months. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Well, you can't win if you don't play, but in this case, you also have to be really quick. This year, Montana Millionaires sold out faster than ever in just five hours. All right, and there you are. Have Thank a great day. Much. You as well. Yeah, a lot of people doing that. You know, tickets went on sale at 5.30 this morning, and people were lined up outside of stores before the doors even opened. 380,000 tickets were available. That's 100,000 more than last year. Part of the excitement this year is the fact that there are now three one million dollar grand prizes that will be drawn. There's also two early bird drawings, one worth $25,000 on November 24th and one for $100,000 on December 15th. But Montana Millionaire tickets sold out in a day and a half last year. That was the all time record. Well, the grand drawing for the three million dollar prizes, it's going to be the day after Christmas, December 26th. What a wonderful Christmas gift. That will be still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2. Water problems have struck several Montana counties this year, and now you can add Crow Agency to the list. We'll have those details coming up next. And later in sports, attacking the net, this scout is using a unique approach as she hopes to lead Bridger back to the state tournament. We'll hear from our Athlete of the Week in just a bit. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.